Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 8, which is the hydrocy compound. Uh, in chapter 8, we're going to look into five subtopics altogether, which is 8.1 nomenclature, 8.2 physical properties, 8.3 preparation, 8.4 chemical properties, and 8.5 penal. So in this video, we're going to focus on the 8.1 and 8.2 first, which is nomenclature and physical properties. So in this video, we're going to look into the general formula of open chain alcohol, but it have a general formula of CNH to N plus 1 OH. Also, we're going to draw the structure as well as classify and name the hydroxy compound according to the IUPAC nomenclature, which include the phenolic compound. Also, uh, we're going to have to explain the physical properties in terms of the boiling point and the solubility of the alcohol. So without any further ado, let us start. So for alcohol, uh, uh, for the open chain aliphatic alcohol, it's going to have the molecular formula or the general formula of CNH2N plus 1 OH. The meaning of open chain of aliphatic alcohol means that it's going to have a zigzag pattern and it's going to have OH here. So this general formula applies for the alcohol which has the open chain. Okay, for example, if we have a CH3, CH2OH, which refer to the ethanol. So for the ethanol, we're going to follow this general formula where the ethanol is going to have two carbon and it's going to have C. 2H5OH here, which applies to this uh, general formula. Okay, and for the cyclic compound, for the cyclic hydroxy compound, this is known as the cyclohexanol. However, it does not follow this general formula here. Okay, and this is also known as the aliphatic alcohol because this OH is attached to the carbon. Okay, and it is not attached to the carbon to the benzene ring. It attached to the carbon that is outside of the benzene ring. Okay, so this is known as the phenyl methanol. Alright, and all of these three, this structure here, this structure here, and this structure here, is known as the aliphatic alcohol because the OH group will be attached directly to the alkyl group. OH attached to the alkyl group. OH attached to the alkyl group here and OH attached to the alkyl group here, right? Meanwhile, for phenol, it refers to the OH being attached directly to the benzene ring, okay? For example, if we have the structure like this, so this is known as phenol, and this one is known as 3-bromophenol, and the structure here is known as 2-methylphenol, okay? Uh, for phenol, the OH is going to be attached directly to the aryl group. So aryl here refers to the aromatic compound, which is a benzene ring. Okay, so here is known as phenol. However, this is not a phenol because OH is attached to the carbon here. Okay, so be careful of that. Now, we're going to do the classification of alcohol. So alcohol can be classified into the methyl alcohol, where the carbon that is attached to the OH will not, uh, will not bond it to any of the alkyl group. So when there is none, it is known as the methyl alcohol. For this structure here, this carbon is attached to one alkyl group, so it is known as the primary alcohol. For this carbon here, carbon that attached to the OH will be attaching with two alkyl groups, so it's going to be secondary. And this structure here is going to be a tertiary because it's attached with 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Meanwhile, for here, uh, this, is, this structure here is known as phenol. Okay? So for phenol, there will be no classification of the alcohol because classification is only applied for the carbon-carbon single bond. For here, the carbon-carbon double bond cannot be classified. So it will just be known as phenol. Okay, how about this one? Okay, so this one is known as the aliphatic alcohol, and this carbon here, which attached to the OH, is going to be attached with another one and two carbon. So this is known as the cyclohexanol, and it has a secondary alcohol. For this one, uh, the OH that's attached with the the carbon that is attached attached with the OH group, which is the hydroxyl group, 
um, it's gonna have the bonded to one aryl group which is carbon chain as well so it's gonna be a phenyl methanol with l, l here and then it's gonna be a primary alcohol okay and the carbon that uh, this one is for your information so the physical state for carbon that is lower than 12 carbon chain going to be a colorless liquid for the carbon which greater than 12 carbon in the compound going to be exist as solid meanwhile for phenol here going to be existing as the colorless liquid all right okay now we're going to do the classification and name the structure of the compound here so for this first structure the OH is going to be attached with the alkyl group. So we're going to find the longest carbon chain first, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the numbering should start from the attachment with the uh, hydroxy compound or the functional group here. Okay, so a carbon, uh, so the parent chain here is going to be named as butanol because OH here refers to the group of alcohol. Okay. And at carbon number 2, it's going to be attached with 1 and 2 methyl group. So it's going to be 2, 2, dimethyl. And OH is going to attach at carbon number 1, right? So it's going to be 2, 2, dimethyl, 1, butanol. So it's a, this one here is a primary alcohol because this carbon here attached with 1 big alkyl group here. Okay, and the name is going to be 2, 2, dimethyl, 1, butanol. Okay, so for this structure here, we have to classify and name the structure. So this carbon that is attached with OH is going to be attaching with 1 and 2 alkyl group. So it's going to be a secondary alcohol. Okay, and now we're going to do the uh, naming. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have to get to the lowest locant. Okay, so 1, 2, and 4. We cannot do the naming from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because or else the set of locant going to be 9 here. If I use this way, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, my set of locant going to be 7. So that is why I'm following this way. Okay. So now, um, my parent chain is going to be this one, which is refers to a cyclopentanol. Okay, cyclopentanol. And then at carbon number 2, it is attached with the third butyl. Okay, I have my third butyl. And I also have my attachment at carbon number 4, which refers to chloro. Okay, so third butyl. The T here is ignored, right? So we, for alphabetical, we only refer it for B. Okay, so B will be written first, then only chloro. So it's gonna be 2 third butyl, 4 chloro, cyclopentanol. Alright, so if I were to write it nicely, I will get it as 2 third butyl. 4 chlorocyclopentanol. All right. Now for the structure down here, um, it, this is the same as the naming of the benzene, where the OH attached to the benzene ring is known as phenol. Okay. So here refers to a phenol, and then you're gonna do the numbering. So number one here, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, so 2 and 5 here. So the same one, which is you need to select the lowest set of locant. 1, 2, 5, going to be 8. So you cannot use this way. Or else you're going to get 1, 3, 6, which refers to 10. Okay, so that is why we follow the clockwise direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So we have phenol, and then we have bromo, and then we have isopropyl as the substituent. Bromo and isopropyl here. So bromo is attached at carbon number 2, and isopropyl, 1, 2, 3 carbon, and then it is like a Y shape. 
Okay, this refers to isopropyl. So isopropyl is attached at carbon number 5. So it's going to be 2 bromo 5 isopropyl phenol. Alright, so let me write it nicely. It's going to be 2 bromo 5 isopropyl phenol. And we cannot classify their hydroxyl compound because it is attached with carbon carbon double bond. Okay, classification is only applied for a carbon carbon single bond. Alright. Now let us move on into the physical properties of the hydroxy compound. So for the physical properties of hydroxy compound, we're going to look into boiling point as well as the solubility in water. So let us look into the boiling point first. So for boiling point, when the molecular weight increases, the boiling point will increase. This is due to the increase of the Van Doval forces. So let's say if you have a carbon chain, which is 1, 2, 3, and OH here, which is a propanol, and compare that with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon chain. So you know that this one is going to have a higher boiling point in comparison to this one because it has a higher molecular weight and hence increase in the Van Doval forces. So more energy is needed to break the bond in between the um, pentanol molecule. Now, um, when the number of the OH group increases, the boiling point increases due to the increased number of hydrogen bond. So the same thing, let's say if you have propanol and the other one you, you have propan 1 to diol, you know that diol, diol here will going to have higher boiling point because diol refers to existing of two hydroxyl group. So when there is more hydroxyl group, it can form more hydrogen bonding. So more energy is needed in order to break the bond. Okay. And as you know, the boiling point of ROH, so ROH here refers to R refers to the alkyl group. So it can be CH3OH or CH2, CH3, CH2OH, and so on. So this ROH here refers to alcohol. So at all situations, the boiling point of alcohol will be higher than the, uh, than the hydrocarbon. So can be alkene or alkene. Okay, for example, um, if you have 1, 2, 3, 4 OH. So butanol will always be higher than butane and butene. Okay? And this is because of the ability of the alcohol group to form hydrogen bonding. So the ability of forming hydrogen bonding will increase the boiling point because more energy is needed in order to break the bond in between the butanol molecule. Alright? And for the number 4 here, uh, it's the same as the one that you have learned in hydrocarbon. So you know that the boiling point of the straight chain alcohol will be higher than the boiling point of the branch alcohol. And this is due to the bigger contact surface area. So when there is a big larger compact larger contact area, it can form a stronger van der Waals forces and hence a higher boiling point. Alright. Now we're gonna look into the solubility. So for solu for the solubility in water. The lower chain alcohol, which alcohol that has five or less carbon chain, they are soluble in water. And this is because of the presence of the hydrogen bonding between the water molecule and the ROH. So between the water molecule and alcohol. So as what you can see here, the alcohol can form hydrogen bonding with water molecule. So the ability to form hydrogen bonding will make the alcohol to be soluble in water. Okay, and the hydrogen bonding is formed in between the molecule. So it is an intermolecular forces. Di antara dua molecule, bukannya di dalam. Alright, and this refers to the hydrogen bonding. However, the longer carbon chain alcohol, yang alcohol yang mempunyai lebih daripada lima carbon chain, will be insoluble in water. Okay? And this is because the non-polar or the hydrophobic alkyl 
group is too large to be dissolved in water. So you will have your alkyl group, for example, CH3, OH, and maybe you're going to have like CH2, 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 OH here. Okay, for the CH3, OH, it's going to be dissolved in water. However, for the carbon chain that is longer than 5, for example, this one going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon chain, it will not be dissolved in water because of the presence of the alkyl group here. So the alkyl group here going to be hydrophobic. Okay, hydrophobic means phobia, phobia dengan air. So it is very less likely to dissolve in water. Okay, so... R here will have the hydrophobic part, which is weak interaction. Meanwhile, the OH group here going to be um, is a polar group, so it's going to form a stronger hydrogen bond with water molecule. Okay, so longer than five carbon going to be insoluble, lesser than five going to be soluble. However, for the ROH with the same number of carbon atom, when the number of the hydroxyl group increases, the solubility increases due to the increase in the number of hydrogen bonding. Okay, so let's say if, there, if you have the same carbon chain, however, it has more hydroxyl group, it will be more soluble. Okay, the same concept as ethanol and ethanol. So, lagi banyak hydroxyl group, lagi mudah nak dissolve. Okay, now we're going to do one example. So, example here, it, they ask us to arrange the solubility of the structure A, B, and C according to the boiling point and the solubility in water. So, the structure A here uh, will have one hydroxyl group. Structure B here going to have one and two hydroxyl group. Structure C going to have one, two, and three OH group. Okay. So, A going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So, they all have 6 carbon chain. Okay? However, the number of the OH group going to be different. So, in our, we have to arrange according to the boiling point. So, in terms of boiling point, we can say that the one that has more hydroxyl group will be the having the highest boiling point. So, boiling point of carbon, uh, boiling point of C will be greater than B and greater than A. Because more hydroxyl group will form more hydrogen bonding and hence more energy is, is needed in order to break the bond. Okay, now we're going to do for the solubility in water. So, as mentioned, more hydroxyl group can form more hydrogen bonding and hence uh, it is more soluble in water. So you will expect it to be the similar arrangement where the solubility in water of C will be greater than A and will be will be greater than B and all of them will be greater than A. Alright. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.